Amos chapter 7. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me. Behold, he formed the grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. Looks like to me that God <laughs> created these grasshoppers at this point in time. But let's read on. And lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowing. So the king had his own special harvest. And you would know that would be the grandest and greater of all the harvests. And God's not prejudiced to attack the king. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of the eating of the grass of the land, I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise, for he is small? The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, saith the Lord. So what happened is, God, God showed Amos, I'm going to attack the crops. And locusts and grasshoppers have always been a, one of the signs of the judgment by God. This was seen in Joel. This was seen in the Exodus of Egypt. The locusts came in. And in the vision, whatever, however God showed Amos, Amos like, Lord, what you just showed me, Jacob, the, the, the nations, shall not survive. Now remember using Jacob that God showed Pharaoh four dreams. Two of them seven years of plenty and two of them seven years of great famine. That we get to Genesis 50. You look it up. Joseph said for this purpose For the saving of the children of Jacob, the children of Israel, has all this happened. Now, could God stop the famine? Yes, he could have. He didn't. He chose Joseph and all the suffering for the protection of his family. And I don't know if Amos uses the word Jacob here. Hey, remember what you did, Lord? But it's kind of ironic that Jacob grass, wheat, corn. And the Lord repented like the times that Moses stood the gap where God wanted to wipe Israel out. This is how angry Israel and their sins get. God's like, I'm done. And what do you think it happens with the church? And you say, well, who stands the gap for us? Our advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. There are times I guarantee with the church and like Jesus, like, Father, they're ours. They're your children. They're sinners. Long suffering. Be a day when we call them all home. We'll, be, we'll judge them. And the Lord has to repent. And thus has the Lord God showed unto me, Behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. That's another judgment. That's another judgment upon Egypt, Sodom, Gomorrah, and devoured a great deep, and did eat up a part. I'm not going to get into the great deep. Thus say, then said I, O Lord God, cease. I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord. Now, and, and now the second thing is God's fire. And that was some of the judgments in the wilderness.
And Amos stands the gap again. To protect the people of Israel. This is how serious the sins are. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. Now a plumb line is, is a string attached to a weight. And what you would do is you would tie that string, you let the string with the weight, and you that's how you would build a perfectly straight wall. It wouldn't be bold. It wouldn't be crooked. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And he said, A plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. So what God says, listen, I'm going to put this plumb line. It's not literal. And as that plumb line put forth a wall, God is drawing a line in the sand. Those to the right of the plumb line, those to the left of the This pictures the judgment at the second advent of the goats and the sheep. But this judgment here is the children of Israel. Those are, are going to be left alive. And those are going to die. Now those are going to be left alive are going into captivity. It's a plumb line of captivity or death. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate. And those high places where they're worshipping gods and stars and all in all. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be with. Sanctuary, you know, and they call sanctuaries in the church. Set apart places. But it's not for God. There's a lot of set apart places in the world, in the name of God, and they worship God. You know, a man can go to church, but he may not be going to the Lord. A man may die in the church, but he may not die in the Lord. I will, raise, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam, that's the present king, there were two Jeroboams, with the sword, war, death. The Amorites are coming. Then Amaziah the priest, of Bethel. Now that's not the priest of Jerusalem. This is not a Levitical priest. This is a priest of Baal. You got to rightly divide the Bible. They had the calves and one of them was in Bethel. And this goes all the way back. It's interesting the name Jeroboam. But this goes all the way back to the first Jeroboam. The sins of Jeroboam caused Israel to sin. It's still there. They had their own priests. They had their own worship center. They had their own feast. They had their own clothing. Like the Levites, like Jehovah, saying, Amos has conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. You know, when you preach what God says, it's always a conspiracy. It's hardly ever received as the truth. And you find that with the prophets, Elijah, Amos, Joel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jesus, Peter, James, John, Paul. Styley preaching in, in Daytona Beach, Florida. You really think the whole world loves Jesus? Step out on a street corner somewhere and hold the sign for Jesus. 
preach with an open Bible scripture out loud and kick the Catholic God, kick the Baptist, the Baptist God, kick the Sodom. And listen, I don't mean you know you just preach the truth. Paul says, "Have I become your enemy because I because I because I told you the truth?" I'm an enemy of, of the Baptist Church of the Christian because of the truth. They talk behind the walls like like Ezekiel. Uh, yeah, Ezekiel. And the land is not able to bear his words. Well, not his words. I'm sorry. They're the words of God. That's not what they think. You get out and preach on the, on the street corner. Hey, this, this is what the Bible said. They don't care what the Bible said. You're a heathen. You're turning people away. It's not what God would do. I let my light shine. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. And Israel shall surely be led captive out of the out of their own land. Well, at least they're listening, because that's exactly what Amos said. You say, what's the problem? They don't want to believe. It. You go to your Baptist. Listen, I love you. I care for you. I pray for you. But I'll pick two gods. Esther, Easter is a pagan holiday. Jesus was not born December 25th. That is a pagan holiday by the spring and by the winter solstice, which is never Christian. It's never celebrated by Jesus or the apostles. And I've had two pastors tell me no sense words to, well, uh, we're going to do it because we're going to do it. And then you raise a controversy. And then you've got a problem. And then nothing you come up. The King James is the only word of God. The infallible word of God. Well, we don't believe any word is infallible. Well, then we got a problem. you got a problem. I don't. I'm going to want to go up to heaven and say, God's going to say, well done. I don't know what God's going to tell you, but he's going to say, you should have listened to him. Are you so bold to think you're right? When I'm speaking from the Bible, I'm speaking the Word of God, I'm taking my stand on the Word of God. Yeah, you better believe I'm right. I'm so right, I'll take an oath on the King James Bible and no other Bible. I wouldn't go so far, they don't do it in the courtroom. But, you know, if I were to go in the courtroom, I would say, I swear to tell the whole... When they put the Bible, which they don't do no more, I would look and say, that ain't no Bible. Go get me a real Bible. Let me go run out to the car and get a King James Bible. I ain't going to swear in that Mickey Dow's garbage. And you better learn to realize in even 2022, listen, Israel is God's people, but they're not listening to God. There are Christians out there they're saved, but they're not going to listen to God. And when you speak for God, you speak the word of God, they're not going to listen. It's a shame. It's a shame. And Amos is telling the truth. Captivity is coming. We preach to the world and to the Christians. Judgment's coming. You better get right. And, and Messiah said unto Amos, O thou seer. He recognizes who he is, but you know, that's pious, figurative, stubbornly, laughability, sarcastic. Go. Oh, if you take that go with the Christians going, you know, if every Christian did what they were supposed to do, going all the world and preach the gospel, and got rid of, come to church, come to, if they were to preach the gospel, 
that when somebody stands on the street corner and preaches the gospel, they wouldn't say, uh, hey, that's what my co-workers are telling me at work. That's what my brother-in-law has been telling me. My sister's been preaching that to me. I heard that on the radio. I came across the, tele the televangelist. He, that's what he said. If we all preach the gospel like we're supposed to, it would be recognized. But no, we, 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 got, we got a light. We let her lie. We let her lie. We let her lie. We run to Matthew, which has nothing to do with the Christian. Because you don't want to witness. You don't want to open your big fat mouth for Jesus and be hated by the brethren and be hated by the word. So I'll just put my nine volt battery in and I'll let my light shine. Nowhere does that say it for a Christian. And your light don't shine. Your people at your job, your family don't know who you are. I bet you're playing the Southern Baptist. I let my light shine. I let my light shine. While I'm sexually abusing all kinds of other people. And then we'll, we'll hide you under the carpet. How many of the Southern Baptists? What about that preacher with a 16-year-old? Did you let your light shine? You are the salt of the earth. No, I'm not. I'm not Jewish. And I tell you, it must be salt because you, as a Christian, are irritated. I ain't the salt. I'm the iodine. You're taking it out of context. It's become an excuse. Flee thee away into the land of Judah. Now remember, that's where Amos was from. Judah. And there eat bread and prophesy there. Go home. You know how many times people told me in the street, go home, will you? Go preach it in a, ch in a church house. Hey, preach that in a church house. That's why I'm out here in the street. You know, we, you know why we preach on the street? Because Jesus told us to, number one. And number two, if you did go to church, you probably won't hear the message, and you'll probably get say this prayer, everyone eyes closed, and, and come up to this altar. There's people in a, in a Baptist church, they say a prayer, and they die and go into the lake of fire for all eternity. You don't speak very well. I'm speaking the truth. So he said, get it. You know what he's telling them? Shut up. Go home. When I ended at the farmer's market ministry here in Daytona Beach, you know what they finally told me? I said, listen, I've been in the hospital. I almost died twice. We wish you'd die. We wish you'd die. Now get out of here. Is that really what you want? Yes. Scraped off the dust off my shoes. I ain't having met back since. They heard the word for six years. But pro now here we go. Ready, ready. That was a that was a run. And prophesied not again anymore in Bethel. Shut up. The house of God. It, remember Bethel? That's where Jacob ran into God twice. Bethel is where the calf is. The Roman Catholic Church before the Roman Catholic Church after Jesus. Long before Peter. All right, prophesied not about that's the golden calf, for it is the king's chapel. You see that word chapel? Have you ever seen that word used in a Baptist church or any church? That's the only place that word is in the Bible, King James Bible. And that word, for, that, that word is a reference to the golden calf worship in Bethel by a non-Levitical priest. 
by a king who's not doing right, because no king in Israel did right, and that king is calling Bethel his chapel with the golden calf. Uh, how dare you have anything mentioned to your church, the chapel? Unless you got false god worship. Check it out. Check the Gregorian. That's the only place I put it on my Facebook today. That's the only place chapel shows up. And it's not a good condemnation. It ought not to be in the Baptist tongue. Yeah, I know a Baptist church. Hey, you know, we're going to have a meeting in the chapel. You don't know your Bible, do you? Oh, you brought me. It is the king's court. It's where the king hangs out. At the chapel. At Bethel. There's a golden move. There's a false priest. Then answered Amos, said unto Amaziah, I was no prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son. You, you run that all the way back to Elijah and Elijah. There were prophets and there were children of the prophets. But I was a herdman. A gatherer of sycamore fruit. That's some, that's some kind of fig. Which is good for man and animal. You know, I was out harvesting one day. And God spoke to me. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, like Elijah. Elijah was plowing. And, and the Lord said unto me, Go! Oh, look at that. That's an interesting word, go. Especially when God uses it. And the Christians ignore it. Prophesy unto my people Israel. See, they're his people. They're just irritating the fire out of God. And their sins have reached to a point, Amos, will you warn them? Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. They're not, but hear it. God's going to give you the word whether you want it or not. Think about that. Oh, here comes that man. He, you know that king with the King James Bible? And what's he going to say today? He's going to say something that God wants you to hear. Whether you want to hear it or not. And it all gets recorded for the judgment seat of Christ. Or the great white throne judgment. I was never told. Okay, open the books. So yeah, such and such day, such and such time. I wasn't listening. I know you weren't. That didn't stop him from saying anything. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel. Shut up. That's what he's saying. And drop not the, thy word. See, you see, thy word. They're saying what, what Amos is saying is Amos' word, not God. Against the house of Isaac. Oh. We got Jacob and Isaac. This is the family. This is the, the family of all the families of the earth. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That house of Isaac also includes Judah. You know why he said Isaac? Because he said, go back to Judah and preach in Judah. Now, Jeremiah will take care of that for me, thank you. And Joel will take care of that for me, thank you. You're so con you know, they're always so concerned about somebody else. Why don't you go somewhere? I, you know, how many times people, you know, if you go over here, you know, 
no, Lord wants me to pray. And I would tell him, why don't you go over there? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, speaking to Amaziah, the, the false priest, thy wife shall be an harlot in the city. The only way she's going to get money. Thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. Death. Thy land, Israel, shall be divided by line. There's the plumb blah. Thou shalt die in a polluted land. You're going to uh, Assyria, Nineveh. Remember, Nineveh was the place where Jonah went and preached, and the entire city got right with God. Things have changed since Ju since Jonah, hasn't it? Don't think just because you're right and you had a couple revivals, you're always going to stay and remain that way. No, that's a Baptist lie. They're, they're debating again, you know, oh, in God we trust in the money. Take it off, it don't mean nothing. I know a couple Christians, they're saved. NASCAR. Oh, I don't go to church because NASCAR is running. You don't have a, that recording device and you can record it. And Israel shall go into captivity for of his land. You're going bye bye, Amaziah. So is Israel. And I, you know, did you notice something about? Amaziah told Amos, in plain simple words, put in plain simple words, shut up. Did you know his Amos did not shut up? And he gave his message to Amaziah, who told him to shut up. He said, Amaziah, I got something to say to you. You know what I learned? I do, and some people say I'm cruel, and I maybe is, maybe it's maybe it's not. When I'm on the street and I'm preaching, I don't give people an opportunity to speak. I don't. I cut them off. Well, it's rude. Because they're going to say something stupid. They're going to speak something of their religion. They're going to tell me how to do things. I don't want anybody else to hear their stupidity. Now, you want to get off somewhere in a park bench or somewhere, we can speak one-on-one, -on -one. we can do, but we're not going to do it in public in front of everybody. I'm not going to let your foolishness. And I've given people an opportunity, and you know, this guy's going to say something good, and he talks, and then he blows it. And, uh, you know, something stupid. And there are times that people come up to me, and they'll say so, and I know right away in my heart, you don't read your Bible. And if you don't read your Bible, you don't know what's going on. You need to shut up. You need to go. Well, you know, it's not, my pastor doesn't do Then please tell me the name of your church so I won't ever go there. Now shut up and let me do what the Bible tells me to do. And I will tell him the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. But he just too loud. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgressions. And if he run really like that, I got that laminated in my street preacher's Bible. And I will show you and let you hold it and let you read it. And God's giving me a big loud voice. And you think it's hard to listen to my big loud voice. You should pray for a mother because she had to listen to her all the years growing up as a child. But I'm not going to shut up because you come up and go, hey, shut up. I'm not going to. You're going to have to get rid of me. You're going to have to come and listen. You know what? We had it here. We don't want you here no more. You don't want me here? Okay. 
You sure? And I'm not going to come back. Yeah. Okay. Well. Judgment's coming. God's giving me a message out of the Bible. God's giving me a loud mouth to preach that message out of the Bible. Hopefully it's Thursday we're going to go start in a new place. And I guarantee they won't be too happy. I don't care. People I go to church with may not be happy. Do you think I care? They don't do nothing for the Lord. Amos cares. That's why in the beginning of this chapter, he opened up and said, Lord, please wait, hold on. Do you realize you may be surviving? Because that man with the Bible, that man that's preaching, is praying for you. And that may be the only reason why God not, has not dropped the judgment on you. Those people at the farmer's market, I told God, I said, God, I pray for their soul. But I don't pray for their business. There are preachers I know, I, I said, God, I can't pray for them. I don't, I'm sorry, I, I don't hate them. I just can't pray for them. There's one particular church. I, I can't pray for them in that church. I can't. I'm sorry, Lord. If, I, if I'm sinning, I'm sinning. That's what Amaziah wants. He went, go away. Give us our golden calves. Let us worship the way we want to worship. Let, you know, that's the wrong thing to do. Why? Because Amaziah, God has told you, and Amos tells you, the enemy's coming. You're going to captivity. You ought to be repenting. God repented. And it's a shame because it hurts the, the, the man is preaching the gospel, however he does it. Door knocking, street preaching, got passing out gospel track, an open Bible, coat, however he's doing. It, it hurts, it breaks his heart that these people are not listening. And sometimes you dislike the leadership of that church because the leadership of that church is driving them more astray. I've had people come up to me, uh, and they've been seriously interested. And I know the words are going to be, oh boy. And they listen to you like, wow. And they'll say, I'm going to go back and talk to my pastor someday. And I'm like, oh no. Nine out of ten cases when they say that the pastor is going to drive them away from doing right. You say, why? Because he ain't doing right. You know why pastors get upset with me? Because I take the sword of the King James Bible and I jab them. And I keep jabbing. And keep jabbing. And it hurts. That's what Amos has been doing for seven chapters. 